Look at how big this audience is. Rows. Out. I know there might be a few seats up too late. For you and back, just stand and listen as intently as you can. Because this is going to be an awesome panel. My name is Jordan French, uh, Grit Daily News, based in New York. Also run Block Telegraph, covered over 10,000 startups. Love talking to VCs about that market. That's why we're here. And we're actually talking about my personal favorite topic, valuations, which I know is on everyone's mind. But uh, just for joining us, big round of applause for Christian Nagel here on, on my right, your left, Early Bird Ventures, 2 million AUM. Thanks for your time and thanks for joining us. Christian Nagel, big round of applause for Christian. Thank you. And Sitar Telly, Connect Ventures is here with us. Big round of applause for Sitar. We're going to hear about some of the work that she's done recently. And Stefan Marais, Indico Ventures, he's our local. Big round of applause for Stefan and all the startups he's supported as well. Now, I think some people can see your eye, and we have to address this because it's visual, it's here, and we're all going to be thinking about it the entire time. So quickly, what happened to your eye backstage, Stefan? Well, you know, we were having a discussion about a down round. Didn't go well. A heated debate. And, you know... You know, we're just competing. No, actually, I just had a little <laughs> accident with my son into the car, and I hit my head into the car like crazy. Well, as long as you're okay. I'm okay. Let us know. Make sure he lets you know. But he, tr real trooper, that takes grit. See what I did there? That takes grit to be back up here. But let's jump right in, because I know you all, all have a lot of questions. I do, too. I, we get a lot of emails also uh, about this panel. And we'll structure it, so I'll share my structure. I rarely do this, but we'll look backwards now and forwards. And start with you, Christian. You're the most experienced out here, 25 years of investing. You describe it to me as the wave, right? Things go up and down. Looking backwards a bit, though, like what? It got kind of weird with COVID and, and everyone was working, as Sitar says, in the room. What just happened, if you could describe this market? Yeah, we have, yeah, we obviously have this, this waves in our business. That's, that's just the nature of, of, of things. And we have uh, been living through a couple of crises, um, starting with the dot-com bubble, real estate crisis, COVID, and now we are into the war, energy, whatever. So we think we have been through this. And the pattern is always the same. Valuations go down, and they be triggered by the public market's valuation going down. And then it trickles through the entire value chain, uh, because Obviously, late stage rounds are affected the most, um, and then it goes down to the early stages, which are not affected too much. But in the end, it's always the same pattern we see over time. And, and uh, the bad thing is we are probably pretty low. Have we reached the low? Nobody knows. Um, I don't have the crystal ball here. But the good news is it will go up again. That's for sure. Confidence. Confidence. <laughs> and Sitar, you had a kind of a funny little analogy, and it's, it, or actually literal, um, about it. Uh, but a lot of people wonder what VCs are doing, especially the last couple of years. There's a lot of Zoom calls. Uh, what exactly was everyone in the VC space, VC space uh, doing? Can you just sort of describe that, that picture for our audience? Yeah, I think like in 2020, 2021, there wasn't much else to do. So everyone just stayed home, had lots of calls, and made lots and lots of investments and got like very enthusiastic about deals. And so there was this like outlier year or two where you know just prices and, and a lot of things got out of control and I think what we're feeling now is not not like a, a really bad market it's just the difference between what was happening over the last couple of years and what's happening now I really think it's more of a relative difference than it is some like really bad market that we're in I view it as like we're going back to 2018 2019 and I mean that was a good time for Europe. Like Europe was on the upswing. It was doing really well. And I think we're not doing badly now. We're just going back to where we were pre-COVID. And, 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 and Stefan, I, we were listening and I'm concerned. Christian said, we don't know how low it'll go. It's almost a paraphrase quote. And um, <laughs> Sitar just said the words, it got out of control. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds scary. Your take. Listen, I think things are pretty simple. We had 10 years of low interest rates. There was a lot of capital coming into exotic parts of the capital markets, which is called venture capital. And basically supply and demand. And there's great technology out there. Lots of new venture capital firms and lots of dry powder. And valuation skyrocketed for, for, for a number of reasons. 
uh, I think we're now going back to a more equilibrated scenario where there is a lot of capital out there still. You know, funds have raised quite a lot. Uh, but um, where the balance of power, let's say, in a negotiation is more even at this stage. And I think VCs are probably being a little bit more careful. Having said that, the very good companies that are really differentiated and can take you know, a whole global market, they keep on attracting a lot of capital at, at very high valuations. It's just that probably there'll be less projects that shouldn't be supported being supported, and also some projects that don't need to raise are not gonna raise at, at this market conditions just because they might have uh, not as high have valuation as they had last year. Certainly, and, and Stefan used the words, you know, even in equilibrium, and we'll set that aside for a moment, but back to out of control, just to sort of quantify this. So looking back, you, you, you know, bracketed that time frame as like 2020 and sort of most of 2021 perhaps. Like how out of control CITAR did things get? Like, I mean, give us some, give us some visual number or percentage. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the, the kind of like macro level numbers were, but you would hear about seed rounds that were 20, 30, 40 million dollars for someone that was not just pre-product, but they just had like a, like a pitch deck. Or someone, you know, some people just had to say they were starting a business and would instantly be offered money and you had these rounds that just got like out of control, again, uh, because they had VCs just coming after them. And, and I actually think it's, it's really important to remember and it's really sometimes hard for founders especially to remember this, but in the end we're all subject to macroeconomic conditions. Right, and so for 10, 15 years, we've had 0% interest rates, right? It's been printing money for free. And so that money is just looking for a return and it flooded into, into venture. And then 2020, 2021, you had this perfect storm of like COVID and the COVID push and a lot of opportunities that we thought made sense and maybe didn't in COVID combined with 0% int interest rates. And so, you know, a lot of kind of capital was deployed and I think it was almost the zenith of, of, of a lot of things coming together and of that time period. Um, and now that interest rates are going back up, like everyone's subject to these macroeconomic things. And it's really hard sometimes for a founder to understand, well, I just want to start a business. What do like public markets have to do with my ability to raise money or valuations? But ultimately, like I'm investing in a seed round. Eventually you'll be raising an A and that A round investor is thinking about the B round and who's going to invest at the B and what valuation are you going to get? And that B round investor is thinking about the C round and everyone is thinking about what might your exit be, right? And, and so these public market multiples and interest rates, they affect us all the way down to seed. And for I think about 10 years, it's been easy to ignore that. And now it's sort of like very, very kind of in our face. We have to be thinking about these things. Uh, the dreaded risk with, with, with regard to this out of control, I think um, we are not, um, out of control seems a bit like it, it's never going to happen again. I'm sure it will happen again. And we've seen this out of control in every of these crises, so to say. <laughs> and now obviously a couple of things came together. We had the higher, higher interest rates, which, which obviously had, had a big, big impact on that. And we had this notion of um, forget about growth. Growth is not being rewarded, it's just profits being rewarded. And then obviously something which is not here to stay, that will change. Uh, so we will come into a phase where profits will be less rewarded than growth and growth will be rewarded because we all live about growth. It's about growth and the end creating growth companies and growth is obviously not being rewarded in, in those times, especially with late stage companies. If you have great late stage companies, 20, 30 million ARR, it's not being rewarded in terms of with 50 times or something like that, but it could, could make sense. But nowadays not at all, but that will come back. Yeah, and that's so it's great. kind of out of control is something, yes, it, it, you agree, but it has, we have seen every cycle we have been out of control in that sense. Spoken like a true like, veteran. <laughs> and, and if you will, Christian, let's drill down on that cycle. So remember, we set aside uh, equilibrium and balance. That's back in front of us on the table. If you use perhaps like an illustrative a physics or chemical example, you have equilibrium and things are coming down to reach equilibrium. Sometimes they overshoot, right, Christian, to the downside. But that's not always the case. Sometimes they reach equilibrium and just sort of level off or plateau. So to develop this conversation to pick up with exactly what you were referring to, what's happening right now, is there momentum to the downside or are we looking at things already leveling out, if, if we you know? know. I, I see a high correlation obviously with public markets here uh, actually. So if public markets are stabilizing and rewarding also growth more, it will trickle also down to later stage rounds. And we have also each um, of these uh, crises had a different, different uh, 
different setup, a little bit diff different, different situation. In this situation, we are in a situation where the funds are really filled like crazy. So we have the highest fill level of all funds across all stages, early stage funds, late stage funds. So they have a lot of money to be deployed. Now we come in a situation where they deploy less. I mean, we just d discussed before, we will still continue deploying, but the pace has gone down, so they will be deployed less. But the money is still in the funds. So what will this, what, what this go, go to? It will come to a phase where basically uh, growth will be rotted and higher prices will be paid. Now the question is, when is it going to happen? I don't know, nobody probably knows. But I'm sure that we are not far away from basically a stabilization or maybe can kind of swing up, up swing again, where uh, growth will be more rewarded again, because there's so much money at least seeking after growth companies and not so much seeking profitable companies which are growing by 10, 20% per year. It's about growth. And we need companies growing 50, 100% or more, and, but they're not rewarded, but they will be sought after. And those being sought after, they can raise at high valuations. Can, can, can I slightly disagree with that? Certainly, I just want to. I just want to remark: people were leaning in, uh, Christian, as they, as you made a, a rough slope with your hand to see what <laughs> uh, what gradient, uh, what angle uh, you were lifting at. Uh, yes, uh, add your bit, and then I, I had a question for you right following that. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think one thing to remember is like so public markets react relatively quickly because companies have a, a dynamic share price, right? So evaluation is always in flux. And so companies are reacting, and you look at like the big, like Fang and like all of the big tech companies, they've let people go, they've adjusted their cost basis. Private companies have been slower, right? Some companies have moved quickly, others have moved a lot slower, and I think we're actually gonna have an overhang for the next couple of years, and we're gonna continue to see companies do layoffs and not make you know, as much change as they need in one go. Instead, it'll be like a series of layoffs and a series of cost basis uh, adjustments. And so it's going to still look like maybe quite a bad venture market because you're going to still see these growth stage companies make adjustments to their cost basis because what they don't have is a kind of always in the market valuation that tells them that you haven't made enough change yet. And public companies do. And so I think public companies have stabilized, but private companies still have some way to go. And if I look at you know, even, even some of the growth stage companies I know, I think there's still some cost cutting that needs to be done. And there's going to be maybe some difficult down rounds and, and, and bridge rounds that are going to happen over the next couple of years. And, the, and there's much talk, uh, Stefan, here of you know, watching public markets as a barometer. And any of us can pull up a chart of perhaps Dow Jones in the US or you know, Euronex or some equivalent, uh, or really anywhere, Nikkei across the world. Is that all that valuation uh, 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 inspection should be looking at, or is there more to the equation in your view? Let me give you maybe some numbers to give you a little bit of perspective to everybody. And we're we're based here in Lisbon, and and we you know we invest in Portuguese and Spanish global uh, companies, which are normal Portuguese American or Portuguese British uh, unicorns. In we we saw 2,600 deals in the last four years since we started Indico. We invested 35, 36 million mostly during 2019 and 20. So last year we slowed down quite a bit because we thought that you know the risk profile of the deals was not interesting. But those companies raised on top of our 36 million, 1.7 billion euros in about a year and a half. So imagine the wall of money that came from the likes of SoftBank you know, and many others um, that got in. And now the retraction that we are seeing is just a, a kind of a normalization to what, what it should be. Of course, the effect, particularly for companies that need to raise, some don't need, our unicorns don't need to raise, thank God. But for the ones that need, how can they justify to their shareholders that an, a VC, a new lead investor is coming in at say 20, 30 or 50% uh, you know, below what it was one year ago? It's a very difficult conversation. So I think the companies that don't need to raise will avoid it. The companies that need to raise and are extremely, extremely good at what they do, they will keep on raising at very high valuations. But there are other companies that will raise, but that will have to sort of swallow the pill and say, you know what, I overshoot on the upside of the top of the wave, and now I'm, I need to normalize. Your question to are we normalizing or are we still going down? It depends a lot on the macro situation, of course. Not so much on the dry powder, because there is a lot of dry powder, but even the dry powder depends on, on sort of the macro situation, the perception of risk that we have 
and that our investors have. And one point, just to repeat it back to you, to distill it, that you're witnessing is here, is even if there's a lot of cash, you made this point too, Sitar, even if there's a lot of cash, a lot of it's cash. possible that valuation still can compress a bit. And sometimes you have to look backwards, just like we did here, to look forwards. Uh, Christian, in your experience, we're all students of history here. Is there a market that feels in the past that today's feels somewhat similar to, perhaps, Christian? Yeah, as I said, I, we, we have this experience basically a couple of times. It's always a little bit different, and the reasons why it happened are, are, are very different, obviously. Um, but we see always the same effect. So we see this effect of normalization, and we always give also the same advice to our companies. Um, if you are a top, top company and we're delivering great growth, you can raise, I would say, almost at any time and at good valuations. Uh, it's, it's, this is still the fact. This has always been in the past. If you're kind of a mediocre company, it's probably going to be difficult. You rather don't raise, rather try to basically shape your company in a way that you can survive the next 24 months uh, with the money at hand and don't raise. And the very young companies, so the seed or early stage, very early stage, um, it's the same because we are talking about a dilution of 20 to 25 percent in a round, um, which is the norm, and that won't change. It has never changed. That, since I'm in the business, it never changed basically. Um, so that's the same. Only that the round sizes have been uh, have been higher, and basically this completely crazy times where where we were overshooting, where seed round happened with 20 million. They won't happen anymore. But you can build your business also with a five million seed round, which is also large, or maybe a three million seed round. That's possible if you have a cool idea, cool team, everything. That's possible, and you will have a, have a dilution of 20, 25 percent, which is healthy. Whereas, would you raise 20 million now, and with a 20, 25 percent dilution, that's very unhealthy because you set the bar too high, and will basically suffer from the next round valuation, which is exactly happening now. So those companies which are raised with 20 million at a seed round, they will suffer now because nobody is going to reward that. Say, well, yeah, you raised that much, and if your money is gone. Why should we? Because obviously your business model is not at the stage where you can raise the next round. So that's why we are now in a much more healthy situation overall than before. It may not sound so nice because everybody benefited from the high valuation, but on the end, it's, we're in a much better situation now. And the good news is, again, I, I repeat myself here, there's a lot of money in the market, so the ability to raise is there because the funds are filled like crazy. And certainly, and just to drill home the point about what's happening uh, today, Christian, uh, for you, Sitar, you had six or seven investments last year, and you're already at about equal number this year. Yeah. So no, and Stefan, your numbers are? We're closing seven deals right now. Right, so more than last year. And Christian? Than last year. Same, something like 12, 15 new investments and a couple of follow-on rounds, obviously. Right, so more. in other words, to repeat this back to all three of you, for right now, it's, it's business as usual. And so turning into our crystal ball, and we saw that upslope, we're not letting you, we're not letting you off the hook uh, a bit, and perhaps it'll come. Um, Maybe an interesting twist we'll take in this conversation, given the time. A few of you mentioned, perhaps, you know, the 90s and, and even earlier, um, 2001 valuations you referred to at one point, Sitar. Over the long run, are valuations sloping upwards? And I mean, like, the really long run. Uh, your take, Stefan. I, I think they are. It's just in general because, you know, the asset class is getting bigger but also the, 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 the pace of development of technology and the impact it has in the world is increasing. So it's a snowball effect. Of course, you're gonna have more attention, more money, you know, finding you know, these companies that are changing the world. Interesting, and your take on that topic? Same, I think, I think valuations have gotten higher, in part because it, it does actually take, people think it, 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 get, it got cheaper to start a business, it didn't actually. Like it, in some ways it's gotten, in some areas, in some ways, it's gotten more expensive to start a business, especially as the, the need for technology has outstripped actually the number of developers that are available, for example. But also the other thing to remember is the outcomes are bigger. The outcomes are much bigger than they were even, even a decade ago. And it's exactly what, what Stefan said, the impact technology is having on the world, the number of end users, whether you're a B2B company or a consumer, uh, or you're within a vertical industry, the number of end users you have that are willing to adopt your technology is growing every single year and is growing rapidly. And that also includes new countries that before weren't part of your target market, right? And so I think as a, as a technology business, no matter what sector you're in, the potential outcome you have is much higher. And so as, a, as an investor, I don't, I don't think it's a bad thing that valuations have gone up, actually. I care much more about, you know, what's, what's my differential? I have a price in and I have a price out. 
right? And, and so what's my return potential here? And I think the return potential has actually gotten higher uh, at a greater rate than the valuations have gone up. It's fascinating to hear this, that, that certainly in the long run, uh, another way to spin that is uh, there are more rewards than ever before to being uh, not just an entrepreneur, but a good one. And your take, uh, Christian, I'll, yeah, I'll give you my, the last word. It's, uh, yeah, uh, so I, I, I don't think valuations have come up over time. I think there's the same. It's <laughs> just inflation because the mask doesn't work because in the end you have to basically deliver returns to your, to your LPs and the same formula applies. It's like the interest, you know, the interest rates we've seen obviously now going up, but the interest rate remain in the same corridors always since a very long time. And this is exactly the same. So we see inflation and only inflation have driven valuations up perceived in terms of 5 million valuation versus 5 million valuation 15 years ago. It was probably a 2 million valuation. So this is just so not because otherwise the, the VC model model or the investing model wouldn't work because in the end you have to deliver returns and uh, so you can't basically pay up so much in terms of that was uh, that was assuming the valuation would have gone up like doubled but then it would mean you would have only the returns would have come down but that's not the case the returns have gone up over time I would say even especially in Europe but there's a different reasons uh, in the US they have been high through all these cycles and this shows that it's only inflation we are seeing here. So it's not per se, on the long run, I'm not talking about these cycles obviously, but the long term thing, it's just inflation. Well, you've heard here that's Christian's theory of, of cycles. That's all the time though that we have. I'm Jordan French.